um, now, exactly noon. Good afternoon. Uh, Honorable Justice. Okay, I think now I'm back. Honorable Justice Martha Kome, Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court. Honorable Justice Philomena Mwilu, Deputy Chief Justice and Vice President of the Supreme Court. Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court. Honorable Judges of the Court of Appeal. The High Court Judges. The Chief Registrar of the Judiciary. Cabinet colleagues present, the Nairobi City Governor, Excellencies present and members of the Diplomatic Corps, Development Partners, our two Chief Justices Emeritus, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. As we were listening to that song, uh, a few things struck me. The gentleman who was singing said that he was in primary school when that came up. Then it occurred to me he must be a very young man. <laughs> then the young boy walked across, shaking our hands, and uh, Mr. Otieno, the young Otieno, and I asked him, how are you? Do you want to become a lawyer and then a judge? He emphatically said no. He wants to become the governor of Nairobi. <laughs> so I was amused. Maybe Sakaja must have done something that uh, has won a heart there. So ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to join you this morning at this auspicious launch of two crucial milestones in judicial accountability. The Social Transformation Through Access to Justice, Blueprint 2023 to 2033, and the presentation of the Annual State of the Judiciary and Administration of Justice Report, SOJA, for the financial year 2022-2023. These two documents are milestones in showcasing Kenya as a maturing democratic state backed by a progressive and transformative constitution. This is for good reason. Kenya's Constitution 2010 provides a comprehensive menu of national values and principles which will bind all state organs, state officers, public officers, and indeed all Kenyans in complying, interpreting, and applying the Constitution and in making and implementing public policy. The Bill of Rights that has extensive social, economic, and political rights is a welcome shift from years of yore when rights and freedoms of Wananchi were taken as a government privilege, never to be seen or heard. For 13 years now, we should be proud that we have done it. It has taken us that short period of time to inculcate and begin living the Constitution, whereas in many other jurisdictions, such an enterprise has taken many years but failed, stuttered, or is convolted in contestations and conflict. Despite hiccups, we must celebrate the single-minded execution of the constitutional framework by the executive, legislative, and judiciary organs of government. Each has kept to their lane, respecting the mandate, powers and functions of the other for the stability we now enjoy. This has worked out because of a leadership realization that though each organ is independent, that autonomy did not mean er erasure of complementarity between the three organs of government. Such a stance 
has ensured discharge of functions without interference from each other, and therefore service to the citizens, creation of a democratic governance system, respect for human rights. Insistence on transparency and accountability as core values has emboldened us to strive for provision of public services that are accessible, cost-efficient, and responsive to the needs of all. I am saying that the Constitution has guided us towards inclusivity. That is why we keep reminding ourselves that in whatever we do, no one should be left behind. The emphasis on should not is because that is the conditionality the Constitution demands of us. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in this context that I commend the judiciary for the manner in which it has discharged its mandate and exercised the sovereign power which the people of Kenya have delegated to it. The launch of the Sojo report is evidence that the judiciary in Kenya is justly committed to serving and to being accountable to Kenyans. I have keenly scanned the social transformation through access to justice blueprint, vision of the judiciary. I have noted the embedded five guiding principles of accessibility and efficiency, transparency and accountability, inclusiveness and shared leadership, cooperative dialogue and social justice. Interestingly, each principle has an outcome that positions the judiciary in focusing on transforming society by ensuring that all citizens, irrespective of status or geographical location, have access to judicial services. This is how it should be, seen and heard, because as the urge goes, justice must not only be done, it must be seen to have been done. Allow me to draw parallels between this outlay and the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, whose focus is on ensuring the ordinary citizen, Mamamboga, are empowered and facilitated to undertake livelihoods, activities for the betterment of their families and society. The key word in between judiciary and the executive nexus is empowerment. From the executive, one is jealous of the judiciary that is miles away in its decisions that have encouraged more people to seek justice whenever their rights have been trampled upon. We in the executive are equally ambitious and are in competition in creating a fervently productive Kenyan. The better 2022-2027 agenda on the governance pillar has committed to the full implementation of the 2010 Constitution through strengthening the rule of law, increasing access to justice, ensuring respect for human rights, and respecting the United Nations Sustainable Goal Number 16, which focuses on peace, justice, and strong institutions. We are therefore not sleeping on the job, although I must confess we are playing catch up to the judiciary in some instances. But we do not lack some insights helpful to the judiciary. For the judiciary, to further enhance its services to uphold justice, there will be need as a priority to look at the following. One, for timely resolution of cases, streamlining court processes, reducing case backlogs, and ensuring efficient administration of justice, removing cobwebs that hinder transparency and accountability in judicial proceedings, rapid integration of technology in processes to improve court operations as we have seen through the e-filing 
and virtual hearing, and fourth, for training and capacity building for all judicial officers. This will mean the, the judiciary progressing to buy in the whole of government delivery as one approach. That requires intensive collaboration between state institutions, such as strengthening collaboration with security and law enforcement agencies. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other hand, allow me to commend the judiciary. You cannot take away the judiciary, the judiciary's admirable efforts in establishing high courts in 45 counties, utilization of technology in case filing, thus granting ease of access to justice to many Kenyans, establishment of specialized courts such as the Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Court and the Small Claims Courts. Indeed, let me reiterate that the executive will not relent on its commitment to support the judiciary in carrying out its constitutional mandate of upholding the rule of law and protecting the rights of the Kenyan people. Before I conclude, let me just touch on two points. Uh, I was privileged a few days ago to be with Mark Omen and uh, the President of the Republic of Kenya. And uh, we were in a, in a forum, um, and the chair of the forum, who happened to be the Chancellor of uh, Germany, allowed the participants to make contributions. But the question they asked was, why would we want to be interested in investing in your country? So as each respondent came up with their, their remarks, um, I'll not mention the names of the country, but one of them said that um, my country is the best to invest in because in the last 15 years we have had free and fair elections and transitions. Um, it's a big country, but they talked of the last 15 years. Then it occurred to me that in Kenya, we are celebrating 60 years. And in spite of the minor hiccups or challenges that we have had over time, we have actually held elections virtually every five years. Not the best. I'm sure the, the judges sitting in this room have come across very many petitions from different angles with people raising concerns. But nevertheless, we did have those elections. So that, uh, uh, in my view, was a major observation. We may not speak to it, but just think about it. You have actually held your elections on schedule, by and large. Now, the other thing that I just want to pick up from uh, Madame Amadi's remarks, she said that she has now, or the judiciary has now established the guidelines uh, for the ceremony when there's transition, um, because she has been privileged to have been part of the transition of two uh, uh, presidents. I'll be looking for you <laughs> because the law that we have, that is the assumption of office law, focuses literally on a ceremony. 
by and large, it's a ceremony. But there's a very big lacuna that I think we should now address collectively. And that is the transformation or the transition of executive power. There's no law that really guides that. It is important because there are fundamental questions. When should a minister step out of office? When there's a change of government? Does he do any handing over formally? Or does he just disappear with the files and records? What about the PSs, the principal secretaries? There's a very serious gap there, and a lot of things happen. And you will recollect that in the transition that we went through, the president of Kenya had been sworn in on September 13th, after the judicial process. But Gazette notices were still coming out, appointing people to various positions after the new president has been sworn in and Gazette notices are being churned out or doled out of people getting appointments under previous hand. <coughs> We reached a stage where we also experienced a situation where I'm a layman, but I am made to believe that if the chairman of the Electoral Commission has gazetted who is the winner, or has actually signed off so that for gazettement the results of who has won an election, it should be gazetted. But we had a situation where the government printer was actually dilly-dallying to gazette the results. And when we found out where he was holed, he said he was still waiting for instructions. From who? Now, I'm bringing this out just to say that we still have some challenges. And with the uh, the legal minds here, uh, let us continue to make Kenya better. Let us continue to elevate and escalate um, our own rules and regulations so that we can become indeed that country, that beacon uh, that we would all want to be proud of now and for the future for the young man Otieno there uh, and his colleagues wherever they are. So it is now my privilege to launch, to be part of the launch of the social transformation through access to justice, blueprint 2023 to 2033, and the presentation of the annual state of the judiciary and administration of justice report for the financial year 2022-2023. God bless Kenya. God bless the judiciary. Asante ni sana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, sir.